Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to tackle a super important topic in aesthetic dentistry that uh, honestly comes up a lot in clinical practice, external in-office bleaching. We're going to talk about what materials are used like carbamide peroxide and hydrogen peroxide, dive into the differences between them, explore how teeth actually get discolored in the first place, and figure out when we choose external bleaching versus internal bleaching. And of course, I'll walk you step by step through the in-office bleaching procedure itself. So let's get right into it. So uh, first off, let's talk about how teeth actually get discolored. Basically, there are two main types of discoloration, extrinsic and intrinsic. Uh, extrinsic discoloration is on the surface. Think stains from like coffee, tea, red wine, tobacco and um, pretty much anything that builds up on the enamel over time. These stains are usually easier to remove with polishing or scaling. On the other hand, intrinsic discoloration is deeper within the tooth structure itself. This can happen because of like trauma, fluorosis, tetracycline staining, aging, or even previous root canal treatment. And uh, for these cases, bleaching can get a bit more complicated. Now, when we think about treating these stains, External bleaching is applied on the outside of the tooth, targeting extrinsic stains and some mild intrinsic stains by applying the bleaching agent to the surface. That's the focus today. But sometimes when a tooth is, is non-vital and has darkened from, from the inside, like after root canal treatment, that's when we use internal bleaching. In that case, we actually put the bleaching agent inside the pulp chamber. All right, so let's talk about the materials we use. The two most common bleaching agents are hydrogen peroxide and carbamide peroxide. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, usually at concentrations between 25 to 40% in in-office bleaching, is a fast-acting oxidizing agent. It breaks down into water and oxygen, releasing free radicals that penetrate the enamel and dentin, breaking down the pigments that cause discoloration. Carbamide peroxide, on the other hand, is typically around 10 to 20% concentration and is actually a combination of hydrogen peroxide and urea. When carbamide peroxide breaks down, it releases about one-third hydrogen peroxide and two-thirds urea. So, for example, a 10% carbamide peroxide gel releases about 3-5% hydrogen peroxide. That means hydrogen peroxide acts faster and is usually preferred in the office fat, while carbamide peroxide works more slowly and is often used for at-home bleaching trays. Now, uh, how does bleaching actually work? Well, both hydrogen peroxide and carbamide peroxide produce free radicals, like oxygen radicals, that diffuse through the enamel and dentin. These radicals break down larger pigmented organic molecules into smaller, less pigmented ones, making the teeth look whiter. All right, so when do we actually decide to use external in-office bleaching? Uh, we usually go for it when the patient has extrinsic discoloration that doesn't respond to polishing or mild to moderate intrinsic discoloration like age-related yellowing. It's also great for patients who want immediate results compared to at-home trays, but we have to be careful because it's contraindicated in cases with like severe enamel defects or hypoplasia, extensive restorations on the front teeth, since composite or ceramic won't bleach, pregnant or lactating women due to safety concerns, and of course, anyone with allergies to the bleaching agents. Now let's um, walk through the step-by-step -step procedure you'd typically follow in the clinic. First, we start with a thorough assessment, evaluate the type and extent of discoloration, and document the initial shade using a shade guide or photos. It's also important to explain the risks and benefits to the patient, like sensitivity or uneven results. Next, we do a gentle polishing of the teeth to remove any surface debris and plaque. That helps improve the contact between the bleaching agent and the tooth surface. After that, we isolate the soft tissues using a gingival barrier or a rubber dam to protect them from the peroxide, which can be caustic. Then, we apply the high concentration hydrogen peroxide gel to the front surfaces of the teeth. Some systems use light or laser activation, but honestly, studies show that light activation may not be essential. It's more about the chemistry of the peroxide itself. Typically, the bleaching agent is left on the teeth for about 15 to 20 minutes and sometimes repeated in two or three cycles during the same appointment, depending on the system and the severity of the discoloration. Once the session is done, we thoroughly remove the bleaching agent and rinse the teeth. 
Then we check the new shade and compare it to the initial one to assess the improvement. Finally, we give the patient post-treatment instructions, like advising them about possible sensitivity, sometimes using desensitizing agents or toothpaste helps, and also recommend avoiding staining foods and drinks for at least 24 to 48 hours. One last thing to keep in mind is that bleaching doesn't affect restorations like composites, crowns, or veneers. So if the patient has any anterior restorations, they might need to be replaced after bleaching to achieve an even shade. And if sensitivity is an issue, fluoride or potassium nitrate gels can help. All right, that wraps up today's session on external in-office bleaching. We covered how teeth get discolored, the differences between hydrogen peroxide and carbamide peroxide, when to use external versus internal bleaching, and the entire step-by-step -step procedure for in-office bleaching. If you found this helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more dental deep dives. Thanks for watching and uh, catch you in the next video.